What started Ice of You was a, really a journey. It uh, started in around 2012. We'd gone to the APEC conference and we presented a paper, introduced our new high voltage differential probe to the market. And we had a few guys come over and hold us up and saying, this will not work for us. And we were like, our new product has doubled the bandwidth of anything in the industry. He says, it doesn't have the performance we need. These guys working on wide band gap, silicon carbide, gallium nitride at the time, were saying, nothing works. These are impossible measurements. And that kind of really triggered coming back into Beaverton and talking to the team, what triggered us to say, we got to do something. Well, it was, it was after their, their trip to, to APEC when they came back with this set of requirements and decided that, you know, the conventional approaches weren't, gonna, weren't going to work. All these other methods that we talked about had obvious limitations and doing it optically got us ahead a lot of, of those limitations. And so we decided to try and investigate this optical approach. So I came on board just about the time that they made the initial pivot from, from small to medium size. What I was asked to do, I, I'm the software guy in the group. We said, well, we're gonna stick this in, in something the size of a pencil. So I had to get really creative with a processor. And I was also given uh, probably less than three milliwatts. So this provided some very interesting challenges with doing a processor in low power mode, shut it down whenever possible. So the team was formed. It was amazing how the team came together. At first, we're all scratching our says, how do we do it? But a lot of times in the lab and a lot of failures along the way and roadblocks at the point where we say, this is going to work. We pivoted at least twice trying to develop something like this. Yeah, you know, we, we did that initial pivot that we're talking about where we went from the, to change the size of the sensor head. And one of the reasons that we realized that that was necessary was because there were all these other problems that we weren't getting to because we were focusing on trying to get the small sensor head to work. And so once we once we did this pivot to the larger sensor head and the off the, off the shelf components, then we could focus more on the connectivity issues, which is huge. That was the next really big challenge that we had. I mean, we, we kind of addressed the power over fiber thing. We had a power budget that we thought we could work within, but then the connectivity thing, we started doing these tests on various circuits that we had in the lab and, and trying to get the performance that we wanted in common mode rejection and conventional connection techniques just weren't cutting it and they weren't even close and so you know we, we we went around and around and around in the lab trying to find an architecture uh, a configuration for that probe tip that would work. Well when I first came on the team they had a prototype but it was just exploded all over a table it was not something that you could package or sell. So we had to start working on a packaging strategy. We had to start working with industrial design to say, all right, we think the box looks like this. How are we gonna make this look fairly decent uh, given our size constraints? And then once they saw it, it was sold. There was no going back. Once they saw that first prototype at APEC with a, a big metal box on their dot with those waveforms, I think there were some choice words too. They were um, amazed that we could do it. That was the most incredible experience, I think, in my life at Tektronix, is that we had a line of customers lined up and that was like the big wow. We knew we were onto something. Though. The other heart of Ice of you is there's, there's at least 10 patents. So each time we ran into a roadblock, it actually generated IP that was, how do we protect this? Wayne, he would solve it. You were on a journey that was like, oh man, I don't know if this is gonna work, and he would pull it off. And next thing you know, it's like, this is awesome. He was like pulling magic every time. It's stable traces, all the warts, he kind of he kind of hid with the software. Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> I hear stories and tidbits about how customers are just excited about seeing things that they weren't even aware was happening. Some of them are even, were said to be even in a panic that, oh my gosh, this artifact is on my circuit and I didn't even know it's there. That it kind of got them worried, but worried for the right reason. Going to these trade shows and, and having this constant stream of customers come through the booth and say, man, this is, this is really great. I've never been able to see this before. How do I get one of these? It just really makes you feel good about having developed this product. Even the last show we went to, even though the product's been out for several years, there's still people coming to the booth with the same reactions. I just could, didn't know we could do this. 
making the impossible possible. It's not just 10% better or 20% better than anything in the world. It's thousands of times better. It's not an, oh, I don't know which one I like better. It's like, no, this one is by far the clear winner. There's no thought. They see it, they believe it. It's a great selling tool.